When you're making your own baseboards and chair rails, you're going to have to decide what to do when you come to an inside corner. Now, on smaller projects, you might be able to get by with a miter joint like this, but with baseboards and chair rails, and for a, to a lesser degree, door and window trim, you're going to be working with long lengths of wood. And what's going to happen there is that those long pieces of wood are going to shrink and swell with humidity. And when they shrink, that inside joint is going to pull apart. The alternative to a simple miter joint is a cope cut, where you shape the end of one piece to fit the molding profile on the mating piece. To cut this kind of a profile, first you have to reveal the profile. And you do that by cutting a 45 degree angle in one end. Then start around the line here, tracing the miter, and cut away this waste. I'll show you two ways to cut this profile out. The first one, and maybe the budget version of this, would be to use a simple coping saw that you can find at any home center. We'll begin by clamping the molding to the bench top. Cut along the outline created by the miter. You want to stay on the waist side of the line. You'll be fine tuning the cope after removing the bulk of the waist. Also, tilt the coping saw to make a slight undercut. That way, the two pieces of molding create a tight joint with no gaps when seen from the appearance side. Use a rasp or sandpaper to complete the cope. The rasp will remove stock quickly, so watch that you don't go past the cut line. Wrap sandpaper around the dowel to reach into the concave areas of the cut. Use a piece of scrap molding to check your progress. Sand is needed to get a perfect fit. And that gives us a good tight fit. Now if you're only doing one or two cope cuts, say just a single room, the coping saw works just fine. But if you're doing your entire house and you see yourself doing many, many, many of these coping cuts, something that's going to speed the process along is a coping sled and a jigsaw with a 20 tooth per inch blade and a narrow body that'll work around these tight little corners here. Again, we're going to clamp our molding in place as we did with the coping saw, with one exception. On the end where we're going to make the cope cut, we're going to mount the coping jig. Now, this rounded profile isn't going to provide a very stable platform for it, so I've cut two small scraps that we can place here to stabilize it. Now to mount the jig, slide it until the opening in the jig is centered over the molding here. Now as you look at the coping jig, you'll see that it has a slight angle that allows you to cut a back bevel automatically as you work. The process is the same as with the coping saw. Cut almost to the line on the waist side. Cut half of the profile from one direction then change to the opposite side to complete the cut.
we're off to a good start, but the jigsaw doesn't cut quite as clean as the coping saw. That difference is going to disappear in a second after we start cleaning up the joint with our rasp and our sanding stick.